Hello, and welcome to Extending AI to Enterprise Routing. I'm Bob LaLiberté, Principal Analyst with theCUBE Research. And today I'm joined by some special guests, Bob Friday, the Chief AI Officer and CTO Enterprise of Juniper Networks, and Kanika Atri, the Senior Director of Product Management, also of Juniper Networks. And we're here to discuss the latest announcements uh, around Juniper's introduction of native AI onto edge routers. And that would include both Juniper's missed routing assurance and Marvis for routing. So welcome Bob and Kanika. Oh, thank you for having us. Happy to be here, Bob, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's get started. You know, when I think about Juniper Networks, you know, really from its inception decades ago, it's really been instrumental in driving innovation in the routing market. And you know, when we think about innovation today, that really means AI technology. And certainly we've followed Juniper for a long time and you've been pioneering the use of AI ops through the, in the network space. And in fact, I think it was just a few months ago, you released the AI native networking platform, which delivers both extensibility and value across the entire network. So, you know, when I, when I think about why that's needed and what's going on from an analyst perspective, you know, I really start thinking about the changes that have occurred in the modern IT and application environments. And that being, you know, they've become highly dynamic and also highly distributed, right? Applications are deployed across multiple data centers, multiple public clouds and numerous edge locations. And the unfortunate part of this is it means the environment has become far more complex. It also means that the network plays a much more significant role, especially across those wide area networks, right? And making sure that these distributed environments are able to have a positive experience and they're able to enable the business. But before we jump into a full on AI discussion, I thought it would be good if we could provide some context for the audience. And I believe it was just a few years ago that Juniper Networks announced its client to cloud vision. Um, and it really focused on providing great experiences to end users. So I'm wondering if you could share maybe you know, the vision behind that approach and how Juniper brings that vision to life. Yeah, you know, Bob, let me jump in here. You know, for me personally, you know, the cloud AI adventure started when I was really at Cisco. You know, I was talking to a bunch of large retail customers, you know, and what they told me when I was back then was they said, hey, Bob, if, if we're going to put like a connected mobile experience onto this network, you know, a business critical app, they're like, you got to promise me that your controllers are not going to crash. You got to make sure you can deliver code more than once or twice a year. And more importantly, you've got to guarantee that there's going to be a great mobile experience when we connect to that network. You know, and that is when I realized there was a fundamental paradigm shift, right? We were going, yes, we have to keep AP switches and routers, got to keep everything up and running and green. But what was more important was we had to make sure that that user is going to have a great experience. And that's when I realized that we're really going into a day two real time operation mode. In addition to day zero, day one, we really had to make sure that day two experience was going to be great. You know, and that's when Sujay and I decided to leave Cisco because we decided that this is really going to be an architectural change in the industry. You know, this really required a blank sheet of paper where we could start from scratch and build in a new microservices cloud architecture on which we could do real time data processing. You know, and that is why we started with the access point because we were trying to answer the question of why is that user having a poor internet experience? And it turns out that the access point or the edge of the network has a lot of the data you need to answer that question. And the reason we built an access point wasn't because we thought the industry needed another one. It was really around making sure we get the data to answering that question. You know, and since joining Juniper in 2019, what you've seen us do, we basically have extended that cloud AI ops coverage across the enterprise portfolio, right? Going from the AP to the switch to the router, you know, what we're talking about here today is extending that across the WAN router inside the enterprise. These are these large uh, routers we see in the enterprise. So that is really where the vision started. You know, and I think the other inspiration was I tell people, if you remember Watson playing Jeopardy, I figured, hey guys, if they can play Jeopardy, we should be able to play networking. So. That's how the vision got started. You know, since joining Juniper, we're basically just a continuing that adventure and extending that cloud AI ops across the complete enterprise portfolio and now extending across SP and data center domains. Excellent, yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. And Kanika, I wonder if you could 
maybe talk to us a little bit about the announcement that you have today. Obviously, we're extending those AI capabilities into enterprise routing. So maybe you could give us a little of the details about what you're bringing out. Absolutely, Bob. It's a great uh, momentous occasion for us to launch MIST Routing Assurance. And this is a classic story of one plus one equal to 11. We're already number one uh, in terms of innovation leadership in the routing space uh, with very, very loved platforms like DMX, like the PDX serving up the edge. Uh, and then we're already number one in the AI ops space with MIST, you know, trailblazing in every imaginable Gartner magic quadrant that there is. What happens when you bring them together? Magic, right? So that's what we are launching today is MIST Enterprise Routing Assurance, which is targeted for our enterprise customers uh, who are buying a lot of the routing uh, layer from us, serving in different use cases, whether it's the private WAN edge, whether it's the edge of the data center, whether it's their cloud connect or peering. In all those roles, now these customers can hook up their MXs, ACXs, PTXs, all our Juniper routing gear right onto the MIST infrastructure and benefit from that. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, extending support to that routing space, to the WAN, it really seems like a natural evolution of where you're going and the vision of what you want to do and being able to, I think as Rami likes to say, you know, it just adds to that flywheel effect of value. The more domains you can bring in, the more context you can provide, the more value it, it delivers to organizations. Um, I'm wondering, um, you know, how, how will WAN data complement, now saying that, how will that complement your end-to-end -end AI ops strategy, Bob? Yeah, you know, so you look at a great example of what we announced last week. So last new week, we announced something called continuous learning for Zoom and Teams. You know, and similar to, you, know, you look how OpenAI took trillions of words to train ChatGPT to predict the next word. You know, what we're doing with our deep learning here, we're taking billions of video collaboration data points and training these deep learning models now to predict the actual user experience on video collaboration, Zoom and Teams. You know, and we're combining that Zoom Teams data with network features, right? So the more network features we get into the model, the better we can get to the granular root cause. So what the WAN network brings is really a visibility into the, the WAN component. You know, when you look at that client to cloud experience, there's a couple of key components here, right? We have that client side, the wireless link, the LAN, and that WAN provider is the other area that can cause pain to our customers. So what the WAN is bringing to us now is visibility into that WAN connection so we can really make better predictions on a user experience and get to the root cause of exactly why they're having a poor user experience. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And if I can, don't mind the pun, you're demystifying what's happening <laughs> In that, in that WAN environment and being able to provide context for users, especially when they're using, I, I think, you know, we could honestly say Zoom and those other video collaboration tools are mission critical. And these days when people are working in a hybrid mode and working remote, they need to be up, they need to be delivering a positive experience. So I think all that makes a lot of sense. Nick, I want to go back to you. You know, why are you doing this now? What are some of the trends that you're seeing in this WAN edge space that really require enterprise routing architectures to be changed? Absolutely. So uh, if we focus on this particular uh, customer segment uh, representing the enterprises, they, number one, they themselves are going through uh, their own digitization journey that started almost you know, a decade ago. And now we see that you know, even doubling down on it especially accelerated by this AI era around us, where the enterprises want to consume more and more AI applications. So on one hand, you know, this, with this enterprise digitization, the WAN network, their WAN edge, becomes even more important, and it needs to be very high performance, right? So that's part one. Second, uh, the enterprises, they are not in the business of selling networks. For them, the network is an enabler, helping them sell what they do, right? Whether it's a retail, whether it's a healthcare, whether it's a education vertical, they're not in the business of making money using networks. So what they really want is a network that just works. And it's even more important because there is a talent shortage, right? Uh, in order to run complex IP MPLS based networks, 
um, there is a talent shortage, right? So to do that, they really are heavily relying on automation to help them uh, basically not have to even worry about the network, right? Uh, load it, shut it, forget it, and then it takes care of itself, right? And that is where AI ops and automation really help them in that journey. And the third thing from an enterprise perspective, right, the sustainability goals have become, uh, have come on the forefront now. Not only is it about meeting ESG mandates, but even in terms of the whole uh, network operations and the total cost of running their entire infrastructure, they need to start thinking about optimizing that power, that space, that longevity, and the whole TCO related to sustainability. Uh, <clears throat> and in doing so, you know, uh, Juniper is actually working on all these three missions of performance, automation, sustainability to help reimagine that WAN edge architecture. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, a lot of those challenges you brought up, we see as well that, you know, difficulty finding skilled resources, um, that ability to overcome the complexity. And so those are a lot of the things that AI ops is specifically designed to help with. So to be able to have the same number of resources, be able to manage a much larger and much more complex environment. Um, and it, it's also great the fact, the other thing I like uh, from my product management days, I always had something I referred to as that principle of least astonishment. So as you continue your flywheel effect and as you extend your AI tools and your um, Marvis assistant across all of those, it becomes that principle of least astonishment. If you have to work in different domains, you're going to be extremely comfortable and familiar with the network management tools and the assistance that are available to help you do that. Um, one of the other things I wanted to drill down into a little bit, you know, some of the same lines of looking at the trends and what's happening. Do you see any specific organizations that will benefit most from having this AI ops in the WAN or is it universal across all of them? Yeah, I mean, I think what we're seeing in the enterprise space right now is that our large campus customers, right? You know, we look at higher ed, healthcare, large financial institutions, all these institutions have large WAN routers, complex backhaul systems in them. You know, if you look what's happening inside these big organizations, right? All those applications that used to run in the data science, all those applications have moved out to the cloud. What this is requiring is very complex WAN routing uh, pipes, or underlays, overlays, and getting traffic between data centers, between campuses. So big, large enterprise campuses are bidding from this. I've talked to one enterprise uh, customer, you know, and what he just wanted to do is he wanted to make sure that he was getting the data from those WAN routers back to the cloud. You know, so before you even get to AI, half the value is getting the data you need back to the cloud for visibility and observability. And that by itself brings value once you get that data exposed to a larger group. I would say the other class of customers we're seeing that see value in this is probably our tier two service providers, MSPs, which to some extent look like large enterprises. You know, and what they're really looking for is churn reduction, right? They're looking at user experiences that making sure there's no churn reduction. So I think we see our large enterprise campus customers seeing value in bringing the WAN data back to their team Zoom models. And then on the MSP service writer side, we're seeing our tier two seeing value in helping them deliver better user experiences and reducing churn in their business. Excellent, now that, that makes a lot of sense. And so for all those industries that are looking to, to get these capabilities I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about the specific capabilities that will be offered through MIST and are available to the customers at the launch today. So capabilities, which products it will cover, et cetera. Sure, uh, so we're launching with uh, support for our largest, uh, hottest sellers like MX204, MX304, and the access routers and the ACX family like ACX7024. Um, all of these uh, will now, uh, customers can use them on this very familiar MIST UI. What the use case that we will be supporting primarily is around the observability and insights like uh, you know, Bob already mentioned. Uh, from here, we are going to take it uh, towards delivering service experience level metrics and really being able to pinpoint you know, um, where the customer experience is breaking and why it is breaking. 
And from there, of course, you know, we're going to leverage all the power uh, of Marvis AI Ops to solve WAN routing problems for these enterprises. Got it. And, and how do you expect some of these early deployments? What type of benefits do you expect those organizations to achieve by deploying this? Have you spoken to any of your early adopters and, and what they're seeing? Absolutely, great question. So let me actually step back and break it down uh, from sort of where AI starts making sense in the WAN network, right? The very first step is to be able to spot anomalies, right? Uh, AI models will be able to tell, for example, oh, there is a service degradation somewhere, right? And then step two is you start correlating. And now AI tells you, I correlated it, and I actually saw a service degradation, not just you know, where you saw the alarm, but I saw it in four other places. It's affecting 20 customers. And by the way, after correlation, turns out that this is related to a particular link uh, that is you know, servicing. Then AI comes in and does a diagnostics, again, some models, and turns out, well, there was some software upgrade that happened and the configuration was changed, and that's the root cause for this service degradation. And then the last part is the actions, where it would recommend, in this scenario, fix the config, and here is the few lines of code that you need to push. Would you like me to do it, or do you want to do a human-assisted action here, right? So when you look at the whole end-to-end -end life cycle of where AI plays a role, it's really about day two operations, helping customers spot problems much faster, so reducing that mean time to know, helping customers diagnose and find the accurate root cause much faster and what much higher degree of accuracy, and then actually taking actions to close the loop and fix the problem and do it in much faster than humans, much accurately, and over the course of time, learn what, what those problems are and actually, you know, make this whole seamless towards a self-driving network. So that's what the benefits we are hoping to deliver to our enterprise customers uh, uh, through the MIST pl platform. Yeah, I think that's great. And one of the things you mentioned, I just want to touch upon for everyone who's watching, the closed loop system that you have enabled in your solution, I think is a great way to make sure that humans are an integral part of the AI. And essentially, as you're going through and doing this, right, it gives you the ability to say, yes, this was right, no, it wasn't, provide feedback, be able to improve the solution, be able to leverage the knowledge that you have of your individual network to provide feedback back to Juniper so it's constantly improving. So that's just a little takeaway that I've, I've learned from working with you over the time, and I think it's an important part for helping to adopt AI in, in a faster time frame. So wanted to switch gears a little bit. Earlier, we were talking about that sustainability aspect. And I've been to a lot of shows this, this spring, clearly AI comes up. And when I say AI, I'm referring to those gen AI environments, right? Those large language models. And the one thing that's really clear is it's going to consume a ton of power. And so you've talked about what you can do. So clearly organizations, you know, there are a lot of these data center environments are looking at, are we going to be limited by the power we have? So every little bit of power that can be saved is going to be important. I wonder if you could focus a little bit on how you're helping those organizations to free up power in their data centers in your edge router environments. Absolutely, I would say this is one of the most important missions where we are investing and by intentionally designing our products to meet sustainability goals. Um, let me break it up into a few dimensions. At the very core of it, you know, the way we design the silicon uh, itself, it means uh, with every new generation, we can make it much, much more power efficient. For example, our latest silicon uh, is 77% uh, better, uh, lower power consumption, around 65% you know, lower space required as you build modular or fixed platforms uh, around it, right? Uh, so the silicon has a big role to play. Second part is the design itself. That's where the uh, platform and the form factor and the footprint, all of these can contribute you know, to, again, the total cost uh, savings and the overall energy consumption. The other part is designing platforms for the long run. We call this longevity. You don't want to be investing in platforms that you have to rep replace every six years or five years, right? So at Juniper, we are very proud even of our uh, long-standing MX platform that is in some networks, been there for 15 plus years. Um, so, you know, for us, really building that two times the cost savings in terms of sustainable power efficiency, space efficiency, 
and two times the life cycle. And then the third dimension is at, in the operation stage, right? How automation can help deliver these sustainability goals. So there are thought processes, you know, not only can we help identify where the network's not being used, for example, some links at night are not carrying enough tr uh, capacity. Can we turn them down dynamically, bring them up, uh, back up in the morning? Um, similarly, can we reroute traffic to a more cost efficient path? So these are all some uh, innovative angles that we are approaching sustainability with, both starting from the core of the silicon to the system design to the whole operation uh, plane with automation. Excellent, that's great. I really, I, it's, it's really gonna be important moving forward that organizations continue to strive to drive that sustainability and reduce their power consumption and look for ways to drive additional efficiencies. Clearly you're taking a lot of steps to get organizations and help them get there. So as we think about wrapping up here, um, let's talk a little bit more about the long-term evolution of MIST and how Juniper AI will really help deliver that self-driving network from an end-to-end -end perspective. So Bob, maybe you, could, maybe you could give all the viewers your take on how you see MIST continuing to evolve. Yeah, I, mean, I see a couple of vectors here on where MIST is going to be involving cloud AI ops. Uh, the first is around Gen AI and LLM, right? We all saw what happened when ChatGPT came to market 2021, 2022. Um, I believe, personally believe, and I believed it since we started MIST, that conversational interfaces are going to be the next user interface, you know, for networking and for other verticals. So I think we're going to start to see that technology start to evolve more. We're already starting to see it do magical things. Uh, you know, at MIST, Marvis, we started with a 2018 with natural language understanding, you know, what ChatGPT really brings is a voice to Marvis now. So we're going to see that extend over time. I think the other thing what we're going to see is these deep learning models, what we're seeing with Zoom and Teams. You know, the same transformation we saw them do inside of the language space, you know, we're starting to see that in networking, right? Models that can actually accurately predict a user's performance. That's what leads to actually be able to get to predicting and get to the root cause of problems. So if I look forward in the future, you know, natural language is going to be a big part of it. Deep learning is going to be the technology that starts to disrupt the networking space and bring more functionality into Marvis and networking. It sounds like an exciting future. I'm looking forward to seeing how it all, all comes out. Listen, that's all the time we have for today. So thank you for watching Extending AI to Enterprise Routing um, on the Cube Research. For more information on Juniper's AI native platform and routing assurance solutions, please visit the Juniper website.